This is for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast. For 40 years of playing PlayStation, and five plus years in the games media combined, I'd like to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Spotify, 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you want to join in on the PlayStation conversation, head on over to our Facebook, Discord, Twitter, Instagram. All the links are in the description below. If you want to join this conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv. TV slash the pop cultures where you can watch us record this show live. Normally, Twitch has been an asshole this weekend. I guess it's that whole like uh, word that we can't say on YouTube. Apparently, locking everyone inside, trying to use Twitch. Maybe Twitch has been overloaded. And then we also tried to use YouTube, which also didn't want to work. So I have no idea what's going on. It's just internet being a bum uh <laughs> but one thing we'd like you to do is if you'd be willing to share the conversation tell your friends tell your family about this little playstation podcast that's there maybe they'll enjoy it they'll take a listen and go to the podcast services leave reviews star ratings all that junk if you want to support us financially head over to patreon.com slash the pop or you can head over to our shop at twi- uh, popculture.com slash shop where you buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. Max, I can hear my kid running already. Mm. I think he just knows. The second we go live, he's like... <gasps> well, as I walked in, your wife's like, oh, I'm trying to get him to sleep. And he's like, <gasps> Max. <laughs> <laughs> Which is only dangerous because he's like, oh, I'm going to run around now. Yeah. Hey, Max, you know something different in the room? Yeah. I have it yet. <laughs> this one. Finally got it. So after our discussion last week, I was like, fuck this noise. Went on the internet, had a look. Turns out, so I'll be, ZQ Racing, I, they, they, chairs caught my attention in December as we, last year, as, we, as I mentioned last week. Um, and they happened to be having a sale over the weekend because they were at Supernova. So they had a Supernova sale. Uh, yeah, no, grab this. Took a couple of days to arrive. Mm, Built okay. it on stream. James then decided to jump off it and break his face <laughs> yeah I can't help but notice there's not one for me that is true there is, there is, there is not one for you currently uh, I only had so many dollars to spare but we'll do our best to get you one I think I seriously I'll be happy with one of those little bouncy balls <laughs> <laughs> man it is a difference though like holy shit so I have been in here playing games in here the last couple mm. of days because I'm like well, look I spent the money I might as well sit in it and use it to its you know its best it's brilliant mm. just sitting here I was like oh, so comfy and like the little neck cush is nice well so everyone started complaining because we've we've moved to we've moved from PlayStation chat to Discord chat mm-hmm. because the PlayStation chat lately has been a little bit finicky for us and now they're all like dude you need to get a new chair every, t- every time I move gets its squeak on oh no so of course I just sit there rocking back <laughs> <laughs> just aggravate the squeak yeah but yeah no we will look at getting you one in here I don't know how long it will take because this was like 400 and something yeah. dollars she looks magnificent though it is very nice so like I went with the uh, the all grey rather than the racing look uh, purple and black because I was like well we have enough of that in the room and I think this kind of adds a little bit and I mean, when you're sitting in front of it, you can't really... Yeah, you can't, like, I mean, you can't really see it because really of it. my broady shoulders and uh, my my ginormous head. Mm. It's really nice. What have you been up to this week, man? Uh, not much. Just work. I uh, had a few social engagements. Mm. That was fun. You know, literal engagements and Aww. all that jazz. Everyone's getting married and such. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. We get there. We had to, take our, had to take the kid with us because our babysitter fell through. And then uh, we're like, oh, it's cool. We're not the only person with a kid here. There's like two other babies in, in, in prams. And then one of our friends comes up and he's like, oh, whose kid's that? I'm like, I don't know. Just because I've got a kid doesn't mean I instantly <laughs> know everyone else's kid and who they belong to. Yeah. Oh, no, it is an assumption though. It's like, oh, you're a parent. You just know. Yeah. No, I don't fucking know one. Apparently we all have this parents group. We all, <laughs> <laughs> we all know each other. Dude, isn't that totally a thing? Like, so when you go to events now, you instantly get lumped with the other parents? No, I haven't yet. And say because we've gone to a couple of weddings and like engagements, and uh, we've essentially just gravitated to the other parents are like, hey, and then mm. our kids are running around together like 
That way, it, like, you don't even need to pretend to be, like, civilized. You can be like, yeah, we've got kids. Yes. He's you just, get he's it. He's going to run get around. It. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, hey, they're going to run around. They're like, yeah, they're going to run around together. Yeah. And then we take it in. We would, like, rotate. We're like, all right, you're going to watch them for a little bit? Cool. And we go off in the other room and be like, hey, hey, And then we come back. We tag them out. And they go in and monitor. Like, you can watch all the children for a little while. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's not too... It's, it's, it's good how, how'd the kid go because you've, you've not done many outings with the kid no, have you done, we've done a fair few outings so she she's fine she slept for most of it she woke up had a feed uh, the issue was Friday afternoon mm. now Friday afternoon <clears throat> I went to go buy a new pair of pants for said engagement party pants good yep and uh, as we get home I lift lift my kid out of the out of her Poops. car seat my like, gosh she's a little bit wet I'm like hun you might want to you might want to change her and she opens the jumpsuit and her white singlet is brown. <laughs> <laughs> no! So the poor kid had pooped while she was strapped in. Yeah. And because when you're strapped in, it's got no place to go but up. <laughs> so my wife's like, oh, I'll, ju- I'll just have a shower with her. I'll take her in the shower. I'm like, okay, you go get in the shower. I'll bring her down. As I'm bringing her down, she pees all over me. I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> worst afternoon ever well it's handy though because uh, for the longest time your kid was having troubles with the poops yeah yeah I mean she still does on occasion yeah but I've got PlayStation the, the pop culture's <laughs> parenting show no PlayStation yet um, but she's doing good yeah you know she's alright nice so I made a, a, a my, my kid you know <laughs> he peed the bed the other day he was sitting on the bed he's like dad I gotta do ways I'm like alright no worries I grabbed him like you're already wet he's like have you, have you peed he's like yep <laughs> they didn't even didn't even flinch he's like yeah yeah I did yeah I told you I gotta do it like right now <laughs> yeah like normally it's like alright run to the bathroom he's like alright done it <laughs> uh, um, but yeah so one thing that I've done this week as well um, I think it's just handy to talk about because it keeps me uh, accountable is uh, as you know I've made some changes this year in terms of trying to be better for my health. Oh, yep, yep. I was trying to work out where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's the start of the year, as I mentioned. So, I, I've stopped buying my lunch. I've stopped eating out. I've uh, uh, I've stopped buying coffee. I've stopped paying for parking, all that sort of thing. So, that like that part of my health has allowed me to, A, buy this, buy this sweet chair. Uh, and on top of that, it's, uh, you know help me because i'm now walking to work so i've lost a couple of kilos from that which is which is great um but i was kind of like i was like expecting to lose maybe a bit more because you know like a big change in diet big change in movement it's like, oh, it's a real bummer. i'm not kind of losing what i want so this week well this weekend actually i decided to start one of those meal replacementy things now have you done this because you can't buy any food from the supermarkets or it's also incredibly <laughs> convenient that at, due to um, the the voldemort of diseases um i have meal replacement <laughs> It, it just worked out really, really well. Because I could buy these anywhere and I can get them shipped here in no issue at all. But yeah, so it's a thing called the man shake. I'm like, does it have to be gendered? But then I also have the lady shake. I'm like, that's worse. Uh, <laughs> but no, like they're, they're designed, like, rather than normally them sort of being, he's a meal replacement for everyone. It is designed for like the tradie, the man, like a, a, someone that does a lot more work, right? So it's all the time. I mean, does it just replace more calories than what? Because obviously men consume more calories. Yeah, so it's a bit, so it's a bit the, and what, what it's built, what it's made of is different as well. Yeah. So there's a lot more protein in it than a woman would, would presumably need. Um, so there are things like that. So I've been drink, I've been, I've done that for yesterday and today um, with sort of then a dinner being, being all right. Uh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It, it's weird. I'm hungry. It doesn't taste like ass. Well, <laughs> I bought the strawberry one. Oh no, you fool! Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, strawberry sounds amazing. Let's yeah. have that one. That's not very good. Yeah. So I made that. I made that mistake um, about a year ago. Um, I got peppermint flavored uh, protein shakes. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> no, peppermint's only good in ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the problem with it, so because I was using an artificial sweetener, it's got that artificial sweetener taste mm. at the back end. I'm like, oh, that's kind of fucked. So you're drinking it with milk or water? Water. Mm. Um, Bet you taste way better with milk. Uh, I'll probably not drink, not drink with milk. Yeah. It's a water one. Uh, so then I went I went to the shop. I'm like, what other flavors they fucking have? <laughs> <laughs> so chocolate. I was like, chocolate. Chocolate always wins. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's, you open it and it just smells like Nesquik. It's brilliant. Okay, well, that's all right then. So then I was like, I had that by itself. I'm like, oh, that's really good by itself. I'm like, what if I put the strawberry in it? <laughs> so I have strawberry. And, and then 
for some reason, I don't know what it is, but like the strawberry and the chocolate put together, it kind of, I don't know what's in there, but it voids out that artificial sweetener taste. Mm. So it becomes instantly better. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to mix it all the time. So uh, so the reason I mentioned on here is, uh, yeah, it makes me accountable because it, it puts in a place in me going, yep, this is my plan. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to be better. If I put it out here, it makes it real. It makes it means I can't be like, Ooh, and then just sneak away when no one's looking. <laughs> uh, it, it's part of it part of it you're here you're my witness you're my witness everyone that watch this at home so see how it goes because if for any reason if the Voldemort virus um, does go away I can be all thin and trim for I come Pax that's the plan Oh, seeing as the four of us have to share a hotel room so it's like well if I take up the least amount of room that'd be advantageous because you know it'd be you Craig Dylan myself it's a lot of dude a lot of dude in that it's room a lot of dude <laughs> But yeah, no. Hopefully, Pax doesn't get canned. Mm. At this stage, it has not. But it's still like seven months away. Although they did say all, what is it? They've put into place all all non-essential groups of any 500 gatherings or more. over five hundred people yeah. as of Monday because Scomo had to go to the the Cronulla game on the weekend. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> but anyways, that's enough talking about Voldemort viruses and my my health and chairs. Let's get into the let's get into the show. With what we always do. What have you been playing, Max? So I dove into Call of Duty Warzone. Oh, week. how is it? I really like it, man. Yeah. yeah. So the, this is the free-to-play yeah. uh, battle royale. Is it replacing Blackout, <clears> I guess? <throat> so there's a few caveats. So it's 100 gig if you don't own Modern Warfare. If you own Modern Warfare... 18 gig so presumably they're making me download the entirety of modern warfare to play this i'd game. say so uh two if you already own modern warfare all your custom classes in multiplayer can be used in the battle royale mode all right so one of the one of the things that one of their uh gimmicks is you can call in loadout packages so you can run your multiplayer loadouts the only way you can get perks um, and some some fancy guns, some guaranteed fancy guns. Can so, you unlock them if you haven't played multiplayer? Yes. So if you play, uh, just playing Warzone will level you up, mm. and that carries across to the multiplayer of Modern Warfare, even if you don't own the game. So if you decided to purchase it at a later date, everything carries across. I like that. So if you get to level eighty in Warzone, your equivalent level eighty in Modern Warfare multiplayer. That's cool. Hmm. So a lot of people are complaining that the people who own Modern Warfare have an unfair advantage because they've already got all the guns unlocked yeah. and they've got better loadouts, which I call BS because, you know. It's kind of true, but it's like, all right. Yeah. I mean, but, but it's not a paywall, though. It's like, no. you know, they just they bought the game earlier than you. So, I mean, you know, just because someone's got a slightly better gun does not mean you can out, can't outplay them. Correct. So uh, the other thing is, uh, one of the other gimmicks is... It, uh, when you die for the first time, you get taken to the gulag, the prison on the map. Oh yeah! And then uh, you wait in turn, wait in line for a one v one. If you win that one v one, redeployed, you're back right. in it. With all the guns and stuff you had before, no, you start no, from no. Scratch. You start from scratch. Oh you fuck! Lose, you lose all your money, you lose all your everything. You just you're you're just fresh joining the fight again. That's a weird risk and reward. Well, it's good because it 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 drops you in above where your teammates are so you're never going to drop back in oh alone. that's handy so presumably you've died near your teammates so you can just go back and pick your stuff up uh, well yeah if i guess well, it depends how long the, how long's the wait to get into the gulag uh it depends so there is a timer in the gulag if no one dies while you're in there you get instantly released you don't have to fight anyone oh so if you go so there's like there a, you're there's not like a, 1v1 there's like a 30 second timer I think and if no one shows up to fight you within 30 seconds you kind of just you get to walk free oh, that's pretty good. Uh, if you die in the gulag you have to wait for your teammates to buy you back buy you back yep so instead of having like revive stations that say Apex has and now Fortnite mm. uh, there is currency in the game there are shopping centers or shopping stations and you just buy back your teammates and they just drop in, fresh character again. Is it difficult to get money? No, not at all. So in game, you can do uh, contracts. So there's uh, essentially capture the point, hunt the target, mm -hmm. and search the area. Search the areas are really good. You get you get guaranteed money, guaranteed weapons because you're just searching loot chests. Uh, they ping on the map where they are, so you really easy to find. Uh, the more f the most fun and most 
rewarding one is the hunt target. It'll give you a, a like a ping on the map. They're in this general area. They'll get a little meter saying threat detection. So as you get closer, they're going to be aware that you're getting closer. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's really fun. Tight gameplay. Um, now that they've fixed the the infinite revive bug that people were abusing for about a couple of hours before they hot fixed it. So basically, what they were doing is uh, team of three. You could. It's only up to teams of three at the moment. So solo duos threes. 150 players per map, which is brutal. Um, but yeah, because so you, many fucking people. Oh, there's so many people. So many people. It's really yeah. So it tells you it tells you how many teams are left. It tells you how many players are left, and it tells you how many players are in the gulag at all times. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, you get it's just like you know, you can buy your loadout and just play your modern warfare multiplayer map. Is that what you're doing? Is you <clears> using your? Because you didn't play a lot of multiplayer. So I didn't play that. a lot of multiplayer at all. So there are default classes that have golden tier weapons mm-hmm. that you can just use. Um, I just pick up and use what I can find. I'm not really a. I spend most of my money on self revive kits and precision airstrikes because you can you can buy kill streaks. <laughs> so when I get like twenty k, I just keep buying airstrikes and just firing them off in all directions <laughs> while I just spend all my just money. Just pick places and you're there, there, yeah. Yeah, so you have to be able to see them through binoculars. So you can't just open your map and be like, I want to bomb there from the other side. You have oh, to be able to see okay. it. Okay. Which is fair fair um the parachute is great <clears throat> uh so you always have your parachute no matter what so if you want to jump off a roof of a building you got your parachute if you climb back up and want to jump off again you've still got it it's not one of these one-time use drop-ins uh, uh yeah it's great it's re- really for a free-to-play it's a shame that it kind of didn't have this follow-on from blackout like everyone was kind of thinking because obviously you know, you buy your season pass or blackout, and now it's just kind of worthless because everyone's going to move on to the next thing. And this has a season pass. The bit so by by having this be a free free download, I think it may it's a give lot it, less egregious. I think it may give it a longer legs. Oh, as yeah, I, I mean that as in when the next Call of Duty comes out at the end of this year, it's not going to be like this is the new replacement mm. because like well we've already got a free to play version. Like they, they can just patch it in. So that way, if you own Modern Warfare, if you own whatever the next one is, say. Black Ops 17 mm. well I think making it free to play was a smart idea like even I've almost I, I nearly broke down and, and got sucked into the season pass so when we like back in the day when this was rumoured so Josh and I were discussing around Grand Call of Duty and being like it would del- it would deliver this sort of a polish that the other ones may not have because of the money that Activision has. So how does it feel compared to the likes of Apex or Fortnite or or PUBG even, if you're going way back? Yeah, so <clears throat> having not played a lot of PUBG, the this game is very simplified compared to the other ones. So there's no, you open your inventory and you can hold X amount of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's all very quick. Um, instead of finding, uh, you permanently have armor. So your armor in the game is. <clears throat> I need to blow my nose. You keep talking. No, you're up. So the armor, how the armor works in the game is you pick up armor plates and you can, they're just a refillable, uh, commodity. Uh-huh. You heal over time. So as long as you're not in a fight, you will heal up. You don't need to find, there are stim packs to increase your healing instantaneously, but it's not like, oh, I've been shot. I don't have any meds. I'm kind of screwed now you do you have that call of duty heal over time as long as i'm not taking damage sitch which i think is is really helpful it kind of speeds up the the game a little bit Mm -hmm. uh vehicle wise lots of vehicles in the game both aerial and land-based maps pretty good um i feel just because because of call of duty in nature it does play a little bit faster pace than the other battle royales okay um, it does have that 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 Call of Duty prestige polish that that the others kind of missing. That, that was so what I was like, thinking. So yeah. obviously between Fortnite and um, Apex, Apex, they're kind of cartoonish to a degree. They're very, uh, especially Apex. Apex has obviously got the character skills, <clears throat> so picking it, uh, it's more role based, I guess you could say. Whereas there are no roles in this. You you're all the same you just you have your guns there's no destructible terrain so like no building like Fortnite no knocking Mm -hmm. down 
buildings or anything like that. It's just, right there. It's, it, it's just a really big Call of Duty multiplayer map. With lots of people in it. With 150 people in it. It's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. So you rate it? Yeah, I'm, I'm super glad I downloaded it. I just wish it wasn't so big. I mean, it's 100, 100 gig. It's brutal. Is brutal for a, you know. For a free to play. For a free, yeah, for free to play. But yeah, it's obviously <laughs> it's obviously because it's forcing you to download that those assets of of modern yeah, warfare yeah, because yeah. it obviously needs those to run to play. So t- so is it is it similar to Blackout? A selection of maps come together, or is it a whole brand new thing? Having not played Modern Warfare multiplayer at all, I, I couldn't can't verify I that. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. That's cool. But I know that um, despite the. Despite the fact, so when you die and you go to the Gulag, it seems to be its own instance because you can actually go there and drop in and land there and loot there. So it's obviously its own mm. section. They've just copied and pasted it somewhere else. Okay. But it's, it's rad. It's, it's definitely well worth a look at if you, A, have the space for it, B, have 100 gig of internet usage to burn And just through, space that you're not using on your, on your console not, for some reason. Yeah. I mean, if you own the game... 18 gig update it's worth it yeah very fun right um other than that I've been playing a little bit more Divinity and um yeah some other stuff nice mm. uh well I myself I played a little bit of <coughs> two point hospital at the start of the week nice. but then a couple of things came our way uh, so one of them being Doom Eternal, mm-hmm. so we can we can say that we have it. We've been playing it. Um, there is a review that Max and I will do that'll be coming up on Wednesday. Keep an eye out for that on your uh, subscription on your podcast services. Very keen to talk about Doom Eternal. Uh, but on top of that, I've also been playing MLB The Show Twenty. So big thank you to play, <laughs> big thank you to PlayStation Australia for providing the code for that one. Um, I fucking love the show games, man, because uh, it, it, it's well documented that that uh, on on these shows how much I, I'm a Beaver baseball fan from way back. Um, wrestling has really replaced my time. I used to watch a lot of baseball, but I really enjoy the game. I enjoy playing the game, and Twenty is just straight up an improvement on, on Nineteen again. So, Visually, it is stunning. Uh, the amount of custom customization around creating me in a video game is is always a laugh. I can pretty much make myself every year, and every year it gets a b- bit better. I, like I'm really impressed how easy well, the I character can make design itself, or you as a person, get a little bit better when you when you make yourself. creating myself. Yeah. Not my skills, because it's, I, 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 it's just the twisting about and whatnot, mm. and I can normally get it. So it's always fun. Every year, I make Big Daddy Betson. So have they made any like vast improvements, or is it kind of just they up the graphics a little bit? Do they add any? There any are some minor. The, there's a lot like of that? UI improvements, um, which I'm really enjoying. So previous, because you played 19, didn't you? And it was yes, PS Plus. Yeah. Um, so when you when you do play your game, there's there's difference. A little bit different in the layout uh, in terms of like what you're seeing on your HUD. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some minor changes around uh, stats and when you get them. So previously, when you say you hit a ball in a clutch moment, your clutch that we got up a little bit previously it would be this big banner on the side of the screen and really take up a lot of space where now what they do is they replace with a small logo above your head it does look a little bit more gamey which yep. is probably the only because normally the show is really good at sticking to looking very almost like a hybrid between game and a broadcast so kind of more simish than yeah so in the same way like sim has that little logo above their head when yeah. they're like learning creativity or whatever so it'll come up a little green circle or a red circle depending on whether you've increased it or you decreased it and i would say like say your yeah clutch would be c you know cth yeah. or you know your hit your power would be pwr right you know whatever so whatever stat that you are you are getting will come above your head so i like that because rather than a big sort of image on the side that says betting clutch plus two or whatever um it's it's subtle it does take away from the overall aesthetic but i i there may be a setting to change it that's fine um musically the game's cool it's got a bunch of artists i've never heard of before but they sound good which isn't which is fun uh it has the utility to be able to put in your own mp3s oh really yeah so you can then play your own music as you enter i don't know how this goes about copyright maybe maybe when it comes to streaming i'm not sure because i haven't i haven't dicked about yeah i haven't really worked with an mp3 in like four years so you put on a usb chuck in the front add it to the game there you go that's pretty pretty cool um on top of that i do primarily stick within the road to the show 
uh, and maybe some sort of uh, exhibition matches, maybe a little home run derby. But 99% of the time, it's it's the road to the show. So that's the main campaign where I make myself, I go into the, into the minor leagues, I make my way into the majors. Um, that's where I get the most fun out of these games. So they have a, like a Diamond Dynasty, which is a trading get card game mm-hmm. equivalent um and you sort of get those cards as you play and then if you play within the dungeons you get more cards again um I, because i'm just not very good at card games i never really dive into it yep um but i, I i'm contemplating sort of getting in there and having a look because you know you're a bit of a card game player maybe you can help give me some yeah, maybe. some some information on how to best play them uh yeah I mean, like it's difficult because because it is a yearly release a lot of it is primarily the same but it just feels good and it looks yeah. good oh, that's good i'm glad you're enjoying your time with it yeah and like it's it, it's been my when i'm when i haven't been playing doom eternal at the end of the night i'll jump into mlb and i'll kind of like chip it away at, uh, yeah at, every, every time i get on uh just see so you playing doom eternal you're like yeah. smashing it compared to what i am i'm doing my very best to get it done for the review so we can't we can't talk about it too much because we, we embargo times mm. but uh yeah no, mlb is is rad Mm, it's that's absolutely cool. rad good to hear uh yeah i just like making me so i, I will be streaming it at some point as well as my on my road to the show um so you'll see me in the you know, you know if you stream it you'll have to play castle yeah but no i, like, I don't want to verse people because I, I just want to play the game because <laughs> i understand the castle kicked my asshole yeah, he's not that good yeah <laughs> like for me i just want to just want to do the story of big daddy bets and it's one of those chill streams you can chat and just you know hit balls out of the out of the park or you know get caught and stuff and get struck out and that sort of stuff but no i really enjoy the game oh that's good to hear uh but anyway that's not about what we've been playing let's get into the second recording for on the players we tell you what happened this week in PlayStation, like half an hour later half an hour later so let's uh let's kick things off with some uh silent hill rumors yes so they don't get much juicier than this one speculation of a silent hill franchise reboot has been doing the rounds for a couple of months now however things have gone up a couple of notches in the past couple of hours this article was written a couple of days ago i believe three days ago not much has happened since then not much has happened since then no so according to rely on horror sony currently has both a silent hills revival project in the works for ps5 as well as a completely separate reboot of the series. That's two titles on their way to next-gen consoles, <gasps> funded by Sony, while Konami continues to own the IP. Sony is supposedly working to patch up Konami's relationship with Hideo Kojima in order to bring Silent Hills back on PS5. Meanwhile, a separate project is, re- is resurrecting the main franchise with a reboot helmed by Sony Enter- Interactive Entertainment's Japan studio. Oh, cool. The game has been in development for about a year at the time of writing with uh, Kishiro Toyama, Akira Yumeka, and Masahiro Ito having some sort of involvement. This isn't the first time we've heard of such a game being in the works, however, with the same two sources reporting on such a reboot alongside a Telltale-style spin-off game yes give it to me <laughs> allegedly sony has pitched the game to kojima as a title more akin to a telltale supermassive narrative driven title which would offer him quote full creative freedom our source does emphasize however that silent hills is not yet done is not yet a done deal and that for now the only game in active development is the reboot from sony interactive japan while sony is pushing for the series comeback do not say they're not <clears throat> Sorry. Do not say they're out to own the Silent Hill IP. Sony and Konami are just working together on these titles. Oh my god. I don't want to tell Tale Silent Hill style game. No, not really. <laughs> I still play it though. I mean, yeah. It's sure. one of those things. Like, is, uh, you know, I. Silent Hill is my franchise. Is it in here? No, it isn't in here. It's in the other room. Because um, I normally put all my games I like. But the thing I had to. Rem- I removed some to fit more still books in there. Silent Hill is dope. Um, I, I for the longest time I've been wanting a reboot because I have gone back to play the original one I think it was on the uh, the PlayStation Classic, mm-hmm. uh, and it is it's a bit rough, but I, but it's exactly how I remember it, which is which is brilliant. And upon the success of Resident Evil remakes for two and now up the upcoming three, I understand why they hundred percent would want to do this. Do you think that the be- that the bad blood between Konami and Kojima could stop this from happening? Potentially, however, if it's one of those things like, oh, we ain't gonna do anything, and you can give us money, then sweet. So, because 
say that this reboot You're implying that everyone has a price <laughs> yeah it's one of those i mean like because kojima obviously got shafted and that sucks but he it looked as if silent hills was a project that he wanted to work on he's mm. like i want to make this happen i want to see this through it's to be something cool and then the other bullshit got in the way so if presumably he want he still wants to that creative endeavor because pt is fucking beautiful Mm. PT is exceptional and they can make an entire game around just like some of the small things they implemented in PT I mean don't get me wrong this is obviously if if this all pans out and works out well for them it'll it'll sell yeah. like gangbusters but even like, even if it's just the reboot that's fine by me like that, the, anything extra would be just icing on the cake because it's it the whole everything about Sun Hill the map the town, the enemies, like the nurses and pyramid head, and you know, like those weird bird thingies, and then the, the front area, and like the, I don't know how. The thing that I find interesting is I don't. I want to know how they're going to get around the design. So one of the big things about Silent Hill is due to the processing power of the of the PlayStation, and it being so low, they had to render that fog. That fog is essentially hiding draw distance. Mm. So when they did the re-release so the hd remaster of two and three uh on ps3 they kind of stepped back some of that fog because of the hd remaster like they could they could change the render distance they change again so i do wonder how they're going to go about that because if someone can't see like a meter in front of them these days i don't know how they that'd be how it's gonna be what how it's gonna be received um and on top of that the silent hill games that came out post like four weren't really that well received either like one was great everyone loved one everyone loved two three was pretty good everyone poops on four but silent hill the room uh i thought it was brilliant i really enjoyed it when i was younger i wonder if i go back and play it now how it will go down because there is a silent hill collection that i want to buy i don't think i've ever bought it i know i own two and four sorry i own three and four no two either way silent hill's fucking awesome um, so I'm very excited for I'd be very excited for this reboot because um, I as I'm curious as to how they improve it, how they change it. You know, what do they want to do? Is it just going to be exactly the same, but just rebooted? So we'll like that sort of like not not the over the shoulder camera angle, the more uh, Resident Evil One for comparison camera. Mm. So you know some fixed locations as well as sort of you know up up high and following. Will they go to a th- more third person over the shoulder? Uh, because I think Resident Evil 2 did that, right? It used to be a bit more up high, but mm. now it's gone back down. My, my brain is going bonkers and thinking about like, I mean, just throw some PSVR support in there. Oh my God, you put PSVR in there. We brilliant. Um, I liked, I, I appreciate them uh, having Studio Japan on it. That'd be pretty cool. I think that'd be a play, great place because obviously there'd be a lot of communication with Konami, so that makes sense. Um, ideally, uh, it would be brilliant if it were uh, in the hands of Bluepoint, but we you know Bluepoint is working on Demon Souls right now, so they're probably not all Metal Gear Solid. So this is the other positive, right? So if there, if there is a relationship going on right now between PlayStation and Konami, that that does put a little bit of potential rumors on that, uh, like Metal Gear. Maybe the Metal Gear reboot, or so the re- the remake, I guess, is this interesting situation of this is it's doing well it's coming together really really well so they're showing konami obviously have to approve on it and, and kajim's looking at it being like oh, it looks really good cam was like it looks really good You're like <laughs> can we do silent hill like well if you can deliver me that then sure there's about four steps of, of like re- <laughs> of required tinfoil hat to get to there jeez i'm really excited i god i hope it's real <laughs> uh, only time will tell <clears throat> Cyberpunk 2077 is due to release in September. It sure is. But once it's out, what's next for CD Projekt Red? We already know that the developer has plans for updates and DLC, and it's going to add multiplayer component to the open world role playing game at some point. But what about its next full project? Unsurprisingly, it looks like the company is heading back to the world of The Witcher. During a recent company meeting, as reported by Polish website Stug. What name? Is that Stu with the umlauts above the U? No, no. Just S T U G. Yeah, S T double O G. Oh, Stooge. Stu- no, because that would have an E. Stooge. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't speak Polish. Neither. It'd be Stooge. Uh, President Adam Kaczynski was asked about life after Cyberpunk 2077. 
His response was that the developer has already started work on an unannounced single-player title and that CD Projekt Red has two, quote, worlds. Within these worlds, we want to create games. Therefore, all the games planned so far are either Witcher or Cyberpunk, end quote, said Kaczynski. Interestingly, it sounds like this next Witcher game won't be tackled by CD Projekt Red's main workforce. Instead, the company's smaller studio will apparently take the reins. Of course, the developer has expanded dramatically over the last few years. There's no doubt that this next title will still have some serious manpower behind it. So what do we actually know about the next Witcher game? Well, CD Projekt Red has previously mentioned that it probably won't have you playing as Geralt, and that it will locally, likely won't be called The Witcher 4. In other words, it's shaping up to be a fresh start in The Witcher's existing world. So like a little side story, kind of like Uncharted Lost Legacy, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it, it's nice. I think expanding the world without Geralt wouldn't be it. A horrible thing to do. Well, because this is more, this is more of a, like, a similar to Silent Hill being one for me. This is one for you. Yeah, I'm super keen. So, uh, where, nice where does your, where do you sit on this? I mean, it's fine. The, I think the the Witcher world has enough in it that they could happily tell another story from a different protagonist than than Geralt. Would they need to be a Witcher? Not necessarily. I mean. You know, there's obviously magic users and stuff in the world of The Witcher. You could, you know, you could play one of those. I, I, it depends on what they're going to title the game. Like, obviously, they they said it's not going to be The Witcher Four. Is it? Is it something a Witcher tale? Or mm. you know, it it will all depend on what they're they're going for. Obviously, I think they're out of source material because the books are done. I think so. Obviously, Geralt's story has been told. But they've got plenty of other characters to pick from. Well, because with with using uh, the Wild Hunt, like how much of it is based on on an already existing book? Honestly, I don't know because I've only finished the first book. Okay, so um, I personally don't know, but I would love to play more in this book. What would you need for this game to work? Because um, initially, my fears exist around the idea. I, I think CD Projekt Red is certainly better than this, but if you think about like Mass Effect right and the, so that had this prestigious studio uh, prestigious uh, uh, history you know made by Bioware who could do no wrong at the time then this then it got moved to their Edmonton Montreal mm, and yeah it got moved to the somewhere in Canada there is that second Bioware team who then you know by common consensus butchered Mass Effect with Andromeda because it's like a side story mm. I you don't have the same concerns here no now i mean obviously that could happen but i would imagine their teams would work pretty closely together especially if they're working on a two ip system where they're either working on the witcher or they're working on cyberpunk Mm -hmm. so presumably once they've once they've wrapped cyberpunk for this year and they start working on their dlc i would imagine not their whole workforce will be doing that which will be which will Allow them to lend the hand that they, if they need it, to to the secondary team. Hmm. Okay. Look, I and, didn't. Really, I didn't really play three. It was too dense for me at the time. I see. That's what I love about those games. Yeah. That's right. Look, if if you're if you're into it, I mean, then I'm into it. I mean, all they need to provide really is something that's rich in story, and their fans will be happy. Yeah, I imagine so. I imagine so. As long as it tells a cool story, people will dig it. Well, it always comes at the back of Cyberpunk too. Like, if Cyberpunk doesn't deliver, then I'm sure there'll be concerns. But it's pretty likely like to deliver. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too worried. Rock said he was ready to rock at E3. Oh this year, my god! Right? <laughs> so there won't be a big live event in LA for Rock City, and there won't be any flashy on-stage press conferences from the industry <laughs> ma- industry's major players. We imagine some will turn to digital presentations in the vein of Nintendo Direct or a Sony State of Play. One publisher that could adopt this approach is Warner Brothers Games. It's one company that hasn't entered the bullring of live conferences, but according to Kotaku's Jason Schreier, it was gearing up for one hell of a show at E3 2020. Quote, More news from me. Warner Bros. Games was planning to do an E3 press conference this year for the first time to talk about Batman and Harry Potter. Fuck! And Rocksteady's game, among others. Remains to be seen what they'll do now, though. 
Uh, as Schreier mentions, Warner Bros. was set to unveil some hotly anticipated and heavily rumored games. Batman Arkham developer Rocksteady has been completely silent for years, but its new game was on the billing for the publisher's showcase. The Harry Potter RPG we've all been waiting for was also due to be announced, and the presentation would have also brought us our first look at Warner Bros. Montreal's much-teased Batman game. Ryan, how upset are you? Because I'm pretty upset. <laughs> I'm fucking <laughs> devastated. So we'll get we'll get to the whole E3 being cancelled thing in a minute because that's the, sort of the big topic of today. But oh, this sucks so hard. So mostly because like for the longest time, like you know, Arkham Knight I didn't really enjoy. Arkham Origins I didn't enjoy at the time, but I think I may have been mis mis like mishandled so like i'm excited for a new batman game uh so that so and last we heard was like batman arkham in insurgency was one of the names this, this is going to uh, deal with the court of the owls and these different different parts of the gcp and all these different like families of of gotham so that got me all kind of damp because it's just cool comic lore uh and then the harry potter one where we saw that sort of tea that accidental leak for it a couple oh, we of saw years that, ago that, that really awkward leak with the the blurry video and i'm just like i want that but i sure. wanted it I, even if it was blurry i'm like i want that and the shit thing is is are we gonna see this like because we was we now know that e3 is cancelled and that's come and that's three months away will we see some sort of digital video package from warner brothers in three months being like here's everything we're going to show you because it is not fair that we can't see this. I mean, I don't see why not. They've obviously got a... They would obviously have a video package ready to show on stage. And then all they need to do was get the presenter that was going to present to record a little video and be like, hey, man, this is what I was going to show. And like, and on top of that, with like Rocksteady and what they rumored to be working on, I think last I heard there was like... There was a Justice League one that was in the, in the works. Uh, Tim and T was another one that I heard. Um, oh just this because rocksteady delivers so good and on top of that rocksteady and the batman game have been literally rumored to be revealed at like every potential conference for the better past the part of the last two years mm. and it's killing me max it's fucking killing me like a harry potter rpg are you fucking kidding i want it i'll take all my money <laughs> whatever there's a collector's edition that like, cool give me two of them i want it yeah no i'd be keen for another obviously loved i, I loved all the batman games uh, i love the combat style i, I love that was a bit poo but yeah i mean sure the cast but, up was poo. <laughs> yeah i didn't like the fact that i was basically a tank for the better half of final boss fight tank 90 percent right. of the game <laughs> <laughs> I want more. I love that world. Yeah, I love that it. lore. Harry Potter. I'm, I'm a big old nerd. Give me, give me some more of that. Like it's uh, been a while since we've delved into that world. Like uh, Arkham. Like I love those Arkham games so much. Like as in like that is the like one of the collections that I have is the Arkham figures. So if you're in my house for any reason, I won't fuck you in my house. But like <laughs> in my uh, messy as shit leisure room. On top shelf of bookshelf is nothing but my Arkham figures. I have like stupid amounts of Arkham figures because I love the the aesthetic design of the, of that game. I love how the characters work. I love how the characters interact. Everything about them is fucking brilliant. So like I'm well, well, well excited for this. Have you have you seen that video that popped up where they swap Batman's animation? The Catwoman, with, oh, with... <laughs> Cause if, Cause like this would be by the, have this being by handled by MWB Montreal. Um, compared to say rocksteady i like it because a it, sh it it gives more validation to arkham origins so arkham origins seems to be like the the, the red-headed stepchild where it doesn't get the love it you know when they did the remastered edition uh, of, of the remastered batman collection it was it was weirdly enough not on there you know and i had like an expectation i bought collectors i got the the joker statue fucking somewhere in the house um I gotta want it. I gotta know how else to say that I want it without saying I fucking want it again. Hopefully they, they come up with a way to, to still announce this stuff to, to the public. I fucking hope so. I mean, it's obviously better than not announcing it. I'm yeah. sure they'll do it in some way. It's one of those things, like, it, it, yeah, whether the, the coincidentally, the Voldemort virus uh, 
what the problem is that it will delay a bunch of stuff uh, in terms of development time but it doesn't mean they can't tell us about it mm. give us something to look forward to in yeah these bleak times. In this, yeah and it's horrible times <laughs> where even twitch won't work for some reason so, yeah. well, oh yeah sorry no it's all right go no, no i was about to say what was next oh well i was i was gonna go oh that's convenient all right cool if it ain't broke ryan sony aren't gonna fix it <laughs> Sounds that sounds very PlayStation. Sony will not be changing its strategy anytime soon. At least in part, the company has dominated this console generation thanks to its incredible lineup of first-party, primarily single-player games. Mm -hmm. The likes of Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, Horizon Zero Dawn, and God of War have helped define the PlayStation 4, and Worldwide Studios lead Herman Holst says that PlayStation will remain committed to its creative vision. When asked about the future of Worldwide Studios on PlayStation 5 and beyond, Holst replies, quote, We're very committed to dedicated hardware, as we were before. We're going to continue to do that, and we're very committed to quality exclusives and to strong, narrative-driven, single-player games, end quote. But as you'd expect from the former Guerrilla Games boss, he says there's always room for innovation, quote, At the same time, we're going to be very open to experimentation, to new oh. ideas, just trying things out to see what works. I think that's also very much part of the DNA of Worldwide Studios. I mean, they've been killing it with... Like, why would you change? Exactly. <laughs> it's a, if it ain't broke, don't It's this it. weird situation where, like... And I, this is this is the, the part of me that... Cause I, even though we do run a PlayStation show here, we do our very best to not be presented as, as bias or of any sort of, like, fanboy nature, right? Mm. Um, however and i agree with this completely like yeah. why change and it's a, it's one of those things because the people use the idea of the comparison of xbox right now right and how drastically they have changed and altered their their, their delivery and it's i'm like yes because they needed to mm. like if they did if they stuck they, on they the same they path, adapted to stay relevant correct so they became more customer focused which you know for good or bad helped certainly improved where they were sitting um i think there are some long-term concerns about their about their new business structure but um that's something that they can look at later uh i myself just being you know a gamer from a bajillion years i'm excited when they, when they say look it's exactly what you're used to that's how i'm getting old because i'm like sweet it's exactly what i know change scares me <laughs> yeah change is scary um but no it's like it's a console that's what it is you know you get the same tri like quality ass games you've had before which is brilliant because for all of xbox is working and all of xbox, xbox is doing they have been unable to match the quality of playstation titles so in terms of their first party so xbox you know does not delivered so state of decay it was cool but didn't deliver mm. you know uh, uh the forzas and stuff okay well granted forza is kind of better than gt uh, i'll admit that any day of the week <laughs> forza is fucking brilliant especially forza horizon so gt gt sport no Gran Turismo is kind of dead because it takes a 19 years to release a single one. <laughs> um, but from like pound for pound, PlayStation wins hands down. Oh, yeah. So if that if that means we're gonna get more more games as you mentioned, like Uncharted, like Horizon, like the best game if not ever, God of War, then sign me up. It's going it's going to make our job even easier because it means we get to just cover awesome as fuck games all the time yeah well like i like i led with you know if it's if it's not broken you don't fix it mm. it's it's working for them it's been working for them for years it's going to continue working for them because that's why people come to playstation yeah and, and it also puts in a peace of mind around about around about the games as well so the other concern would be if they were to make that transition towards like well let's let's go with what the the market says you know let's make more looter shooters let's make more online games as a service worlds and like no no we'll keep them with what we got and that makes me happy because you know you know in in the world where every other publisher is just finding ways to get money from you and create a game that you'll only ever want to play that game and just funnel every cent you have into it it's nice to know that we will be getting just straight up single player brilliant story driven games because like before i've been playing the games i've been playing this week i died back in horizon so i've been chipping off on that one as well because miles might be golf this year was to finally finish it um the game is brilliant mm. absolutely brilliant it's stunning 
and it you know and that and then i've been some of the clients at work have been replaying the uncharted games it's like fuck me fuck me it's so good and like god of war i was watching our good friend ghost in the machine stream it and i'm like i want to play this again it's one of those things like even like very few games and i understand there's probably some bias in there it's just i'm like everything they've delivered has been absolutely amazing mm. absolutely amazing and i don't like i guess if you it depends whether you where you sit like if you're a big nintendo fan i imagine if you're like yeah luigi's mansion was fucking tits you know it's like probably it was <laughs> it probably was like i played it for a while and it was great but it didn't deliver the same because it's one of those things like as i've aged i feel the playstation has aged with me and they are making games that fit me and what i want out of gaming so there are other places where i can get the other the different gaming options like the multiplayer games like my you know my farming games my po- things that i get a kick out of right but i i do genuinely feel that unlike nintendo which have really stuck within the same age demographic and i've nicely aged out of it I, I, the, for me, the thing that Sony does is they tell a story that, despite the fact that it's obviously not of this world and it's a fantastical story, it's still realistic. In a, in a, in grounded. A, in a sense. Grounded, in a sense. It's not telling this... It, it's quite serious in its storytelling. It, it um, evokes the right emotions... And, and it, and in the way it tells its story, I think, like like you said, it, Sony has grown with us, in a way. And it's one of those things. It, it's what makes it amazing is these are games that are demonstrating that that games can be art. They can tell emotional and mm. gripping and brilliant stories, and we get that from the likes of The Last of Us. We get that from Uncharted. We get that from other other games as well, like Red Dead Redemption. Like there are other games, external PlayStation that are on that level. But in, in terms of if you look at the entire uh, sort of chunk of games that have been released, especially within within this last generation, Xbox have nothing in terms yeah. of if you want to if you want to not 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 doing the us versus them thing it's just more of talking about the different businesses and, and how they're that, how they would approach it it's like that you're not like how long has that halo tv series been in the works rumored for yeah and it's never come to fruition saying that so is uncharted but i mean then likes of you know the last of us is becoming a movie and it's one of those things like you're not gonna make a crackdown tv series you aren't going to make uh what are the fucking franchises like recall you're not going to make like what other games that actually even have that would be like that story is so brilliant that you know rise son of rome Woo. i'd write a fable tv series yeah, that would be fucking dope though <laughs> saying that though if they if they coming talk- off the back of like the witcher tv series i gotta yeah. watch a fable tv yeah, series. if they at any point if they say hey fable's coming back i'm like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my uh my my opinion will change very quickly yeah did you know ryan that uh you own your own dreams what <laughs> Dreams has unbelievable potential and provides people with the ability to craft almost anything. Sure does. We've already seen a multitude of fantastic games made using the in-game suite of tools, and the community continues to build ever more astonishing things. So impressive are some of the, so impressive are some creations that they could feasibly outgrow Dreams and become beloved IP all of their own. But how would that work exactly? Who owns the rights to your creations, and can you use them outside of the game? Media Molecule. Uh, Media Molecules Siobhan Reddy has published a very interesting blog post over on indreams.me and it dives into some of the questions. Firstly, quote, you own the IP for the original creations that you create in dreams, the studio confirms. Whatever original content you have made belongs to nobody but yourself. What's more, you're perfectly within your rights to utilize your creations for personal use. Quote, in your artwork or music portfolio, in a collage or design your own t-shirt media molecule suggests however it sounds like the studio is finding ways to support business use of your creations too quote we've had lots of questions from creators about using dreams for viable business opportunities off playstation such as concept artwork rights ready we welcome and encourage creators to do this but it's new territory for us we've been busy behind the behind the scenes mapping out what we can make it easy mapping out how we can make it easier for creators to do this in the future to that end the studio has developed a beta evaluation program 
Through this, creators will be able to submit an application for the potential use of their creations outside of the game for business reasons. It's only open to certain users, however. Quote, early access members in good standing. It sounds like Media Molecule is open to hearing ideas, but some examples of possible future uses, possible uses for Dreams creations outside the game include concept artwork and music videos. Interesting. It's good. It's certainly good news to know that you've created. So if you're someone that, you know, unlike everybody else, apparently, who's only just copywriting, uh, making copyright infringement, like if you're going hard and you're making your genuine own content in the game, then that's fantastic. And you should be, and you should be rewarded and treated as such. So it's very cool to know that they then own that. So like someone like, and a good friend, a uh, good friend who was on the stream once, uh, Multimu, the guy that made that awesome spooky game that my son still watches to this day. Um, knowing that he will get to own that because that was brilliant mm. and if it's a possibility that if he works on that and, and he makes it even better again he could make some money off it makes me oddly happy yeah i mean this is what they set out to do right they wanted mm. they wanted a, a space for creators to be able to create something that is their own and it's nice to know that they're going to be rewarded for that mm. hopefully hopefully it's 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 an easy process hopefully it's not too, there's not too many hoops to jump through obviously at the moment it's still in a beta program where only early access creators have access to it um and obviously you need to be in good standing so i would imagine if your account's been reported too many times for or even just or, or possibly even a good rating yeah so because there is that sort of uh, uh internal um algorithm algorithm what's what i'm looking for curation yeah uh so you know if you if, if you're creating a lot of a lot of games but they're not getting a lot of well not well curated then it's like okay cool well you just you're making a bunch of games and they're not going that well received sorry mate dunskies but if someone is making one game and it's well loved and it's getting heaps heaps of hits and it's getting well you know lots and lots of thumbs up then it's like okay well then you are someone that we should continue to work with in a, a larger sense. Excuse me, I hitch up my pen. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 fan. It's it's br- oh shit. No, it is certainly brilliant for those that have been putting their time and their. I guess you know, time is money. They're putting their time in there to make these games for in order to make dreams look better. It's nice to know there may be at some at some day a way for them to make some coin. Mm. Have you gone back to Dreams recently? I haven't actually, no. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah, no, I, I haven't really... Um, out with what we're doing at the moment. Yeah, with the other games we've, we've been jumping on, I've not really gone back. Because um, you know, in terms of, of, of our... Of our uh, uh, I think it's I think it's one of those games that I'll dive back into every month to see mm-hmm. how it's progressing, to see... Yeah, to see how the community has improved on their skills yeah. and knowing that like uh two of our other competitive australian playstation pods which are also friends of ours so but they both have dreams segments oh really yeah so that each week they will dive into a new one almost like a little pick like hey he's our dreams pick of the week that's so right. it's a cool idea it's a great idea and that's why it's theirs like i'm not gonna jump on that they can have it so if you want go check out those other shows see what they recommend um it's mostly because well how we tackle the show is very different to how they tackle the show mm. their shows um yeah so i'm not gonna but we, we piss fart around on other things and reviewing other other things so um but yeah if you want to do that check it out because like i the, my original plan was to maybe have a look you know at least play all the ones that won their uh, impies their awards but we've been really busy <laughs> and like in that window of time where i was like oh maybe i'll play some games play some dreams while we wait for the next game to come out and then i'm playing like horizon and two point hospital and (laughs) those other things so the time that i had allocated i did not use correctly for dreams speaking of time allocation it's crunch time (laughs) hey Hey. naughty dog games are generally a cut above the other titles you find on consoles but that comes at a cost the company has been consistently called out for its challenging crunch culture, and a new article published by Kotaku reveals little has changed behind the scenes as the Californian studio wraps up work on PlayStation 4 exclusive The Last of Us Part 2. It touches up on the team's perfectionism. While overtime is never mandated, it's expected that all employees are workaholics. Quote, you feel obligated to be there later because everyone else is there later. An ex-developer revealed, 
quote, if an animation needed to be put in and you weren't there to help the animator, you're now blocking that animator and they may give you grief. Thank you, buddy. This has allegedly resulted in high staff turnover. Quote, this can't be something that's continuing over and over for each game because it's unsustainable. At a certain point, you realize, I can't keep doing this. I'm getting older. I can't stay and work all night. Alarmingly, the report claims that about 70% of the non-lead designers and artists who work on Uncharted 4 A Thief's End have now left the company. The developers yet to issue a response to this story, so we'll just have to wait to hear their side. An update on the story, the, the, row revo the row revolving Naughty Dog's work environment has rumbled on, with ex-animator Jonathan Cooper sharing a huge Twitter thread on his experience on his experiences following Kotaku's crunch expose. In the messages, he mentions that a friend was hospitalized after the team worked heavy hours to prepare for last September's The Last of Us Part 2 preview demo. He also insinuates that the developer is no longer able to attract the best talent as its poor reputation for staff retention is notorious among professionals. Quote, Ultimately, Naughty Dog's linear games have formula and they focus test the shit out of them. While talented, their success is due in large part to Sony's deep pockets, funding delays rather than skill alone. Vice President Neil Druckmann almost cer certainly motivated by the above posts, the following message in response earlier today. Quote, Even after years of working on it, I'm still blown away by the animation in part two. We have one, if not the best animation team in the industry, both in raw animation skill and technology technical knowledge can't wait for you to experience their incredible work end quote so when we talking about this before we before we recorded the show so initially when i heard this i was like oh fuck off jason Schreier. Like, i love jason Schreier, and i think he's one of the best journalists out there and that's why he reveals stuff like this but it's one of those things that i've not seen him just say fucking anything positive in the longest time so a lot of it was me going oh fuck off like just say something good can someone say something good, please? However, it's kind of right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a seventy percent turnover on huge. on teams. But is saying huge. that though, like the game's development does is known for its turnover, and Naughty Dog has that enough like sort of prestige behind it that if they if they wanted to go somewhere else, they're like, "Hey, I worked at Naughty Dog," and they're like, "Oh, no worries." Like I, you know, I helped make The Last of Us Part Two, so like, oh, come, please come. Which seat would you like? <laughs> yes, yeah, so like you know, in terms of these are games that have only have critically been coming out as brilliant, right? So that is a very like glass half full way to look at it. Hey, James, can you leave the door shut, please? It's creaking. Shut the door, please. Thanks, bud. Um. Oh, he's bad. <laughs> but that is that's how it could be looked at from a glass half full. A glass half empty is everyone's fucking hating it and bounces. Yeah, it it's it must be rough to like cuz cuz as the as the person said they don't force you to stay there, but it's expected because other people are going to be there and you can't be that guy who lets everyone else down. Mm. like if you're not doing your job the other guy can't do his job and therefore you're putting everyone out yeah and that's that worst kind of culture actually mm. it, it's that it's that, it's that very weird line um because like i know that like because because team a can't do the work until team b finishes their segment but but team b are waiting on team c's input and it just throws everything out of whack mm. like it's it's rough but obviously it's it is look. I have, I, have, I have a weird stance towards crunch, um, mostly because it's one of those situations of are they compensated? Yes, then fine. You know, it's 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 not quite that simple. Like, I guess there's additional torches, but when you hear about studios that are being forced to crunch and they're not being paid for said crunch, mm. that I have a problem with, because that is that is horrible use of your of your staff. However, if they are being paid for that time, brilliant. However, there's a lot of however's here. Then. If they're then in this culture that is forcing that workaholic workaholicism that's not a word work oh, ad additional hours uh that you know with, it, with not no gun to the head situation but they're almost semi forced to be in that position then yeah that's fucking gross too 
it's so tough not being part of that see because obviously we're not game developers it's hard to just say well why can't they just release the game three months later and spend an extra three months and just work a little bit less but the problem is by judging by this that's the that's i saw a quote that was like uh, last of us part two would have come out a year ago if it wasn't if they had better stuff so of implying that because they because of the return around because of the with the the history that the that the friend uh the not sorry the um reputation that naughty dog has of turnover that they could have had the game out already if they didn't have to get new staff in that may have not quite have been that level but you know what i mean but they wouldn't have had to get the staff in if the culture wasn't there already mm. so it, it's this weird like, i was this this uh, i mean this, I, I mean i take the this same, is an interesting uh, i mean i take this take the same stance as you as long as they're getting paid for their overtime but it's it's one of the, it's one of those things like i and as long as they're not forced to be there always work more than my required hours well i'm the same you know what i mean it's one of those things like i constantly work over my hours not saying it's a good thing but with some jobs it's needed like an example is you know i had a client who didn't get picked up on time on friday so i i stayed an hour and a half longer than i had to Mm. and then even then most days i'm normally there 45 minutes longer Mm. you know granted it's not the same numbers as what we're talking about here with 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 that but there is the expectation for me to do more than what my job is that granted i'm about to get a job uh, my position is about to altered but in a good way but you know what I mean it's, it's, one, it's one of those things it's like I only get paid like I'm on salary I get paid X amount it doesn't fucking matter what I do yeah, so like, unlike these guys who get paid for over time I'm not seeing a dollar mm. well see I'm the same I, I, I'm i being contract based I'm contracted for X amount of hours but I'm never there for X amount of hours because it's not like oh, time's up I'm gonna go I stay until the job's done mm. because that's just what it is yeah Gra- obviously granted i'm there maybe half an hour extra each day not hours like these yeah. guys yeah but it's it's this weird line right because you know this is an interesting take but the studios that they that they discuss about crunch and how it's bad they're the they're the studios that deliver exceptional games rockstar naughty dog but is that is the exceptional game worth the met worth the issues that they're having because like apparently people are being hospitalized for the amount of work they're being doing yeah they're, that's, they're, they're that's getting fast. to the point where they're too much yeah that's a bit fucked but if it's if it's if from my understanding of, of development like if they if the game gets crit- a critical reception of whatever everyone gets fucking bonuses because there's money coming up the bum hole so mm-hmm. it's one of those things i know because look in short it's a business business is based around money and like i guess my approach to business is that very businessy minded right so you know yeah you're gonna bust your ass now but come and come once that's out and you've you've made the best possible game that you can or the best possible product that you can you will be reimbursed for your time mm. And additionally, right? Similar, you know, you're my job, right? We can we can go 120, percent but we ain't gonna we ain't getting a bump. Mm. You know what I mean? We don't like, even we can deliver the product that we that we work for, but we ain't getting a bump at yeah. the end. So it's this very weird line, and I guess and it's that weird thing about creative endeavors as well. Creative endeavors don't stick within time frames. It's so weird because like I understand, like I don't want to see people hurt for for fucking games. Games aren't that important. Yeah, see, in my mind, it's like, just push it. Mm. Just push a couple months. What's the big deal? That's what, that's what they've been doing. Like, you know, dates have been flexing more than ever. Mm. But, you know, it's, it's... Like, I get they also answer to a higher board or whatever, and they yeah. have to meet their numbers by financial years. When they they've hit got, the, the, the they've got milestones, to, they've, yeah. they've got to do what they've got to do. But, like, you know, it's rough. It, it must be hard for the people that are working there to have this expectation of although i don't have to be here i have to be here yeah it's very very difficult Mm. let's talk some quick bits okay there's not many (laughs) beyond lending his incredible musical talent to the last of us part two gustavo santol 
should have practiced this beforehand. <laughs> Santolala is joining us to bring over The Last of Us to HBO, Druckmann tweeted. So I believe he is the composer. He is the composer of The Last, Last of Us. Of he's, the, he's the guy that sat one with like the guitar mm. at, uh, at the E3 thing two years ago. Like I have the, um, the vinyls for both The Last of Us and The Last of Us Left Behind and oh it's beautiful mm. the music in those games absolutely stunning so knowing he's back like why would he not be because they've probably done a lot of the music now yeah so it's interesting that it's, this is a rough this is common knowledge did they bring him in for the HBO yeah. series oh wait the series yeah oh yeah, yeah it makes more sense but yeah like it would be I thought that would be uh, an assumed Call of Duty Warzone attracts more than 6 million players day one yeah it makes sense yeah hey, so. fuck holy fuck you you make you make something free. Look what happens. And I totally threw this last one in for me about our conversation last week that I want more Prince of Persia. He's back. You willed it into existence. In For Honor. Oh. <laughs> wow, well, that sucks. Yeah. yeah, it's literally the <laughs> literally the uh, reaction I had when I saw. Like, it. Oh, I was like, oh, Prince of Persia back. No. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what's the deal here? What, what the- oh, you can play as Prince of Persia. He's okay. just a playable character in For Honor. Alright. Yep. You have the little time dagger. Yeah. It's cool. Then a Viking just punches your fucking face <laughs> in. Yeah. Yeah. Spartan kicked off the... <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's uh, that's all that stuff. Let's get into the main topic of the show, Max. Let's have a chat to the players about E3 and E3 being no mo. So, following reports that the event was on the cusp of being called off, E3 2020 has now officially been cancelled. The ESA, the organization behind E3, has issued a statement that cites, quote, increased and overwhelming concerns regarding the coronavirus. <gasps> you said the Voldemort name. Mm. After careful consider... Quote, after careful consultation with our member companies regarding the health and safety of everyone in our industry, our fans, our employees, our exhibitors, and our longtime E3 partners, we have made the difficult decision to cancel E3 2020, scheduled for June 9th to 11th in LA, the statement reads. The ESA says that it'll reach out to exhibitors and attendees in order to issue full refunds. Interestingly, the statement does mention a potential online experience which could replace the cancelled event. The ESA is exploring options with our members to coordinate an online experience to showcase industry announcements and news in June 2020. The ESA supposedly had big plans for this year's E3. It was set to spotlight celebrity cameos and promote popular online personalities, which unsurprisingly attracted a lot of heat before on the internet. What's more, Sony announced that it would be skipping E3 2020 months ago, while just a few weeks back, industry and E3 veteran Jeff Keighley revealed that he also wouldn't be taking part for the first time in 25 years. Simply put, it was starting to look like E3 2020 would be a bit of a disaster. All right, well, let's get this out of the way. They've made the right call. Uh, the Voldemort virus is fucked. And what they're doing here is when you're going to have tens of thousands of bodies walk through, this is this is the whole to reduce spread, period. Yeah. Simple. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on the Voldemort virus, go check out Dash Gamer Podcast. I did a special episode this week with him all about it and how it's affecting the gaming industry as a whole, as well as just sort of I put some insight in from my mild science background um the more discussion that i want to have here max is how do you think this will affect e3 i think a lot of the people that were going to be there to showcase their stuff will just go the way of uh, of nintendo and now sony and they will do their I mean, the one thing is the, the old chair you be able to lean on the top and no, i can't lean Does on that it not Oh no, it does not. Um, they'll go digital, hopefully. Mm. I mean, E3 can still be a place where they host their digital show. Everyone streams to the E3 page. You get everyone in. The show can still go on. However, uh, the thing here is that, yeah, from conferences, yes. But the conferences are such a small part of the overall E3 experience. Obviously, there's not going to be any of those run-in meetings. Indie people are not going to meet the big publishers that they need to to, to push their games. There's going to be so many 
people are going to miss out on opportunities by having E3 not be there because there will not be those chance encounters that could possibly happen. Yeah. And that's that's tough and rough on all of those people. I think it's going to cause a lot of a lot of problems. I think a lot of people are going to miss out on opportunities that they could have otherwise had due to this, which sucks. Uh, for for fans, we're probably still going to get what we want out of an E3. We're still going to get our reveals. We're still going to get our trailers. Maybe we're lucky. Maybe we're going to see all the all the all the games that they were going to show off on the on the on the show floor. Maybe we're all going to get to download them and play them from the comfort of our own homes. You know, maybe it'll work out better for the fans. Mm. Yeah, but, look, but but for the people in the industry, this sucks. This yeah. this has to be, uh, especially after GDC getting getting postponed. A lot of a lot of the packs throughout uh america now are, are gonna be are, are gonna be canceled as well uh i mean tw- twitchcon in in amsterdam is being canceled it's looking the same way for twitchcon at the end of the year all these all these places where that gives that give people the opportunity to network and do the things that they need to do are all getting canceled and it's going to cut off a lot of people from being able to do what they need to do to get their stuff done yeah, look, from, from a viewer perspective, yeah, I think we'll get everything that we got before because most people won't go there anyway just because of, of cost. So we will still get the conferences or at least the reveals that we, that we were that we were expecting or that we were looking forward to. So that part of E3 will continue. Um, as you mentioned, having it be the uh, one of the biggest places for, for creators and, and publishers to shake hands, that will cause detrimental effect, especially within, within this year. Um, however, I do think there will be, because of the delays across the board there will be uh, a sort of a slowdown coming into as we start moving in terms of that so like people that would have met anyway oh, baby they There's may still meet but a little bit later yeah um, my concern well it's not even really a concern my thoughts on this really is that with E3 delivering upwards of 60% of the dollars that ESA need to f- to exist this may may be enough to cripple them so <clears throat> knowing that already when we had the creative director step out when we had uh jeff keely step out we had playstation step out all these different places and people were not involved in what e3 was becoming yeah so and on top of that so people were already disinterested or not seeing this vision of what E3 was becoming, so then they're now being pushed, and then that that has then cancelled. So if anything, ESA are fucked. Um, so come next year, if, if they can somehow re get things back in in the in the fold, they will have to go back to what E3 used to be. Like that will become an entirely trade show because the cost associated with re- bringing E3 to what they want it to be this year from, you know, the Q entertainment, the celebrities, that sort of stuff. They don't have the money. They won't have the money. Mm. So they will have to return to what they were and they will find that yes, it may not be as successful as PAX. It's better to have something that you can make money on than rather than something you can make all the money on. Um, and like that, that's the big difference. E3 is a point of difference compared to the likes of PAX. Now, PAX is great from the consumer delivery way, like as you go there and you play the games, get your hands on that sort of stuff. And from a direct customer-facing position, nothing can be PAX. But that, that doesn't mean that that's what you need to become. Specialize. What, what works in this day and age is specialization. Mm. And if by them being that point of difference and by them being that trade show is where they will... Like, yes, they, 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 what is it? they won't make as much money, but it's better. It's, it's just better, period. Yeah. Like, it's one of those problems, like even with PAX, right? We as low-end press have problems at PAX because it's just the amount of people that are there. So I'd hate to be at E3 and then be press and then have to deal with all these foot traffic of, of all these people that, are, that aren't press. Mm. And E3 was gnarly when it was just press. So 
they, yeah, they're going to take step backs. And I think they have to completely reconsider this new approach they're making, which, if anything, may in fact be for the better, because I think what they were doing, what they're planning to do, wouldn't work. Like, it would, if anything, it just mildly prolonged their death. Well, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens, because all these publishers who now will have to do their own thing this year to mm. announce what they were going to announce, they might realize that, A, this is cheaper for them, and a lot easier and they might not want to do any exactly and then that's where then if you were e3 you would pivot and then become that point destination for everyone to go digitally also much tougher sell because like why the fuck we just put on our own website mm. so there is there is that battle as well because as the ever the ever changing landscape of media and 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 content delivery really e3 as it stands is old it's old it's an old method. It will no longer be. It no longer needs to be used. Like it, it need. It did need a change, and it sucks that a, a, a literal pandemic has had to be what may force them to change or kill them, because it's one of those things they have an out. Yeah. If they they can say, look, due to the Voldemort virus, we we were we are it, it put such a strain on us at a company we cannot deliver the exceptional e3 that we had planned so yeah they go out on a bad note but it's more of a well it wasn't your fault but imagine imagine if it didn't and they delivered some really subpar bullshit and that tainted their name and that crashed them yeah they, they were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place this year very much so especially with sony pulling out for the second year in a row especially on the back of a new console reveal that would be happening this mm. year if sony ever decided to do that <laughs> yeah, who, who knows whether, whether the effect of it might be some console delays I, I think i think this this issue this this viral issue will be rippling for quite some time through mm. all aspects of Very our day-to-day so. day life but anyway let us know what you think of e3 being cancelled uh, how do you think the future of the e- of E3 will work? How will the ESA survive? How will they go? Let us know. Comments below. But uh, Max, like I said, there's there's there will be a ripple effect on games. However, games will still come out in this time, and it's all about games that are coming out this week in a section we call "Coming to the Players." So the new PlayStation games for March seventeenth, twenty twenty. Caveat being, this is the US playstation blog so some games will not come out here in australia some will just have different dates first up we have chop is dish ps4 digital out march 16th fucking name yeah looks great doom 64 ps4 digital out march 20th uh it comes bundled with the special edition for doom eternal speaking of which doom eternal ps4 digital retail out march 20th read that description <laughs> Hell's armies have invaded Earth, become the Slayer in an epic single-player campaign to stop the final destruction of humanity. Also includes Battle Mode, a new 2v1 multiplayer experience in which a fully armed Doom Slayer faces off against two player-controlled demons in a best-of-five round match of intense first-person combat. I played the tutorial for this, it actually looks pretty rad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Epic Word Search Collection PS4, PS Vita, Digital Cross Buy For all the Word Search junkies Woo! Woo! Explosive Jake PS4, PS Vita, Digital Out March 18th Using that uh, Indiana Jones font mm. Kamiko PS4, Digital La Mulana 1 PS4, Digital Retail Cool La Mulana 2 hey! PS4, Digital Retail hey, That's cool <laughs> Oh, there's no three. I thought it was going to be two. MLB The Show 20, PS4 <laughs> Digital. No date. It's coming out Friday? Comes out Tuesday. Comes out Tuesday. Read that description, please. It's baseball. <laughs> MLB The Show 20 is what baseball dreams are made of. With new ways to play, greater customization, and more exciting new paths to take in rewards, this is the biggest and best show ever. The Show 20 is your ticket to play America's pastime your way. Fuck yeah, it is. Yeah. Never Last, PS4 Digital. RBI Baseball 20, PS4 Digital. That's bold. <laughs> Rainbows, Toilets, and Unicorns, PS4 Digital, out March 17th. Red Death, PS4 Digital. Round Guard, PS4 Digital. Thunderpaw, PS4, PS Vita, Digital Cross Buy. T 
TT Isle of Man Ride on the Edge 2 PS4 Digital out March 19th yeah that's it alright the big standout here is obviously Doom in terms of games uh, of no I think you're confused show. between Rambo's Toilets and Yukon's <laughs> <laughs> yeah obviously the big one's Doom Doom 64 MLB The Show yep bangers it's a, it's a, it's a good week for me specifically <laughs> <laughs> specifically for you yeah it's been a great week for Betson it is a great week for Betson shall we yeah this PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8am on podcast services including Spotify and 9am on those YouTubes if you want to join in that PlayStation conversation head on over to our Facebook Discord Twitter Instagram all the links in the description below if you want to <laughs> Uh, if you want to uh, join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash the Bob Coulter, where you can watch us record this show live when Twitch wants to work. Uh, <laughs> uh, one thing we'd like you to do, if you'd be so kind, would be to share the conversation. Tell your friends, tell your family about this little PlayStation podcast, as well as the other shows, The Young and The Wrestlers. Uh, if you want to support us financially, head over to patreon.com slash thepopculturist or our merchandise store at popculturist.com slash shop. We can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. And as I mentioned at the front of the show, be sure to check out our Doom Eternal review, which will be coming out this Wednesday, the 18th. Do a quick math there. Check it out. I think it's the 17th. I know, fucking Wednesday, all right? Actually, it might be the 16th. No, because that's my- tomorrow. Tomorrow's season's Monday. As is the 18th then. Yeah, 18th, cool. Why did I think it was 14th? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, thank you very much for your time. I hope you all enjoyed the show. When we'll see you next week. But until then, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And that was for the players. Nice. For the players, the Pop Culturist PlayStation Podcast is fan supported at patreon.com slash the pop culturist. And we'd like to thank our Patreon producers and our Patreon founders for their kindness, their support, and their generosity. Our Patreon founders Alpha Ferret, Craig O'Flaherty, David Chataway, Jesse Stevenson, and Jacob Garner. And our Patreon producers AJ Abatomi, Damien Holdies, Kyle Dunn, Lee Winterchauvin, Nathan Massetti. Paul James, Pure Mongrel, and Sean Levitt.